It's a pleasure for me to be the first to welcome you to Los Angeles for what I'm sure is going to be quite an exciting week. It's a celebration of gaming. It's directly focused on video games. It's like a big toy box. It's like the Vegas Strip, like in a very small warehouse. Incredibly intense. And the moment of truth for developers. Our real challenge is to take gaming to a new level. Well, every industry needs a gathering point. E3 is a kind of one-stop shopping as far as finding out what's going on in the industry. To go and see the bigger picture of this multi-billion dollar business is an important part of letting everybody know how serious everything is. What we're working on is very, very important. This is where the curtain rises. This is your moment. This is your opening. It's Broadway. It's opening night. And you're either hot or you're a flop. And where the curtain falls. This is the story of the gaming industry's biggest party. It's the story of E3. E3 is clearly the Super Bowl, the Olympics, the World Cup all rolled into one for the video game industry. Now you're talking. Every industry needs a trade show. Greetings and welcome to the 1986 Winter Consumer Electronics Show. A place for vendors to meet with buyers. A place to decide which innovative idea will become a successful product and which will never see the light of day. As a fledgling medium, the video game industry had to live under the wing of an established conference. Historically, it had been part of the Consumer Electronics Show, the huge show held in Las Vegas every January. For a long time, the games business was an afterthought to the consumer electronics industry. So we were kind of a sideshow. We were P.T. Barnum off in a side tent. You know, they were always kind of in the worst pavilion. You had to like walk past all these car stereos to get to the games. You know, it was cool when you went to it because you got to see all these new games, but you definitely didn't feel like you were the, the reason for the show. Now we have something very small but treated very much as a stepchild, not as the showcase, the centerpiece. It's just amazing that technology can be put into this small box. The game industry had become an increasingly large part of the show. Thanks to some big games, like Tomb Raider, which is first introduced to the public at CES. Tomb Raider was very much a hidden treasure. We went to the Consumer Electronics Show, and we had a full array of games, and one of them had to be Tomb Raider with his character, Laura Croft. We displayed it, and the buzz was amazing. Literally, the game took off. The show was such an amazing event in terms of the game being so well received that everyone started to realize, wow, there's an amazing game over at the IDOS booth. It's like the swarm of bees, everyone kind of descended upon our booth, saw this amazing technology, true 3D environments, saw amazing animations, saw the first true female lead character in gaming. By 1995, game journalist Pat Farrell sees the need for a 100% game-only trade show and quickly shops the idea around the industry. Pat Farrell was one of the very key people who helped create E3. He worked for a um, company called Infotainment World, which published a number of game publications, and they were real passionate about the industry. And the industry, frankly, felt that it had reached a point of critical mass where it could support a show of its own and deserved a show of its own. We formed a small group and, and sort of battled our way, hired some outside talent that was good at the, the show organization standpoint. We meet a couple times a year to talk over issues, but uh, when we did launch the show, it turned out to be the most successful single opening of a new trade show in the United States history. In the spring of 1995, the very first E3 is held in Los Angeles, California. I remember I had plans to go to CES, and then Nintendo dropped out, and then, you know, Sega dropped out, and it was like, what's going on? And then there's this new game show. And I was like, ooh, what's this? Oh, it's in LA. The evolution of that, it was amazing how fast it happened. It wasn't like E3 had to go through a couple years before everyone accepted it. It was like, people have been waiting for E3, and when it happened, they dropped CES like a stone and went straight to E3. In its inaugural year, nearly 40,000 people attend the expo. Highlights include the unveiling of the new Sony PlayStation and Sega Saturn consoles. 
So E3 was created to create a dedicated event that would highlight and showcase the best of interactive entertainment. I grew up wanting to go to CES, you know, reading about how CES was cool and how all the new games were showing off at CES, and I dreamt about going, and then I finally got to go to CES once. Then all of a sudden the next year it was like, oh, now there's this thing E3, and I'm like, well, all right. For us to split off and make our own show it was a, a bold statement for video games and where video games were going at the time, and to be able to go someplace and have video games be the focus and not be kind of shoved off in these tents off the side of the real convention was really important for us at that time. I think that was big. Great. It's the best ever. <laughs> yeah! The gaming community embraces E3 as its very own. Yeah. And it soon becomes the heartbeat of the industry. But it's not all business. In the spring of 1995, the debut of the very first E3 in Los Angeles is by all accounts a huge success and a great time. The first E3, like, uh, I was actually still working at a, uh, I wasn't at a game magazine yet. I was like the gaming editor at a Macintosh magazine. And I walked in there. When you walk through the doors, there's tons of noise coming out of all the booths. There's tons of lights, there's characters walking around, and everybody looks excited, and everyone's excited to see the brand new stuff. They didn't have any OSHA regulations about noise at that time, and so, uh, or they didn't enforce them. So you walked in, and it was just like your eardrums started to hurt. <laughs> you know, just like flashing lights. You know, it's kind of trite to say it's like a drug experience, but it, but it was. I've never done LSD or whatever, but it's probably what it's like, just like, it was incredibly intense. In 1997, E3 changed locations, a move not popular with gamers. E3 was in Atlanta for a little while and everybody complained and I moved back to LA. After two years, E3 came back to Los Angeles and attendance increased to over 60,000. Nearly 145 million people play computer and video games. Stakes are high and game companies spare no expense pouring hundreds of thousands of dollars into booths. Obviously, the money has grown, the big ka-ching, ka -ching. How many people are here to see the games? Yeah! People are spending more money on the booths. People are spending more money on the parties. People are spending more money on the booth babes. It's all about the money now, and it's all about getting that game into the store to please all the retailers and the press and to make an impression. And that's why to be the game of the show at E3 is a big, big deal these days. And the companies that exhibit here are dedicated to creating a presence that showcases their product, but also engages and entertains people. And it's the only trade show like it in the world. Nearly 600,000 square feet of the convention center is filled with what's new, what's hot, and what hopefully will sell. All right, step right up. We need four more players. More commerce and promotion take place during E3 than any other time. One of the biggest things that I remember from E3 is when Sega showed the Dreamcast. And I think that was a huge, huge deal for a lot of people at E3 to show what their game plan was, what they had got coming out. Then as I went to other ones, you know, the PS2 launch is very exciting. GameCube launch was very exciting. To see that rise and fall of hardware thing like that, it was pretty fascinating to me. Yet there are always some surprises. Nintendo held a press conference at the start of E3 to unveil our lineup of games, and it was packed with about a thousand journalists from around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Nintendo is old, Shigeru Miyamoto. And we had Mr. Miyamoto come out from the back of the audience to showcase his new game, Super Mario Sunshine. And the minute he appeared from the back of the house, you just saw the excitement on those faces. And the minute you see Mr. Miyamoto smile, it's absolutely infectious. And it was just a happy crowd to see him come out and play his new game. You can't help but be just part of the excitement. <laughs> It's also a chance to check out the competition. Watch and learn something. I guess in terms of the games you get to see there, it's really cool because as, as a big video game fan myself, I love to see the up and coming games for, for the next year. 
it's just great to be able to, to try them out hands-on, to go and play them, to talk to the developers. That's probably the thing that I enjoy the most about E3, is meeting other developers. We created technology that would allow us to get the most out of the PS2. It's part of the industry. It's an important part of the industry for marketing, for sales. PlayStation 2 worldwide shipments have now exceeded 30 million units. It's a lot of fun if you know how to approach it. And putting together a show of this magnitude is a challenge. I mean, there is uh, so much activity that goes on during the E3 show. Between the lights, the sound, the video, we probably draw more power than, you know, most of the shows out there. In fact, uh, LA Convention Center had to bring outside trucks in for like the last four because we draw so much power. A few years ago, we had an exhibitor here who told me that they had more lights in their booth than the Rolling Stones had on their Steel Wheels concert tour. And for this trade show, it's the after hours that has people talking. You're always on your feet for three days continuously, including a good part of the evening in many cases because they have events every night. You're always on. You're always networking with everyone in the industry. How are you doing? Cool. And that's really important. It's important to do that. Uh, parties are great. I certainly love the parties at E3. Um, <laughs> well, a lot of the parties obviously turn pretty insane. That's right. You know, they border on, you know, they border on almost lunacy at times and, uh, and I think those are the ones that most people always stays in their head. After some of the parties in the morning, I'm, <laughs> I, 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 uh, I don't look forward to that part, but I look forward to the actual partying part and the doing business part, but the morning after, you know, I, I can do without a few of those. PlayStation 2 has enhanced dear loved ones lives, so. <laughs> Some will do whatever it takes to get the attention of the game press, like Epic Games' Cliffy D. I've been known to wear an occasional outfit here and there. There was a while there I had a whole big uh, pimp suit phase at E3. You know, I enjoyed dr dressing up as a pimp, per se, in, in various uh, purple suits, red suits, and whatnot. And uh, people ask me, like, so, dude, what's with the suit? And I'm like, because I can. I'm like, you know what? This is the, you know, when I go to a convention, I can actually dress up and, you know, wear something interesting and, and have fun with it. Why the hell not? And then there are the models. Every year there's hot chicks here at the show. I'm no one's honey, boy, I'm not your honey. My mission is to attract the crowd. We're perfect and smiling. <laughs> I'm not your honey, boy, I'm not your honey. Oh, the whole booth babe phenomenon, I mean, don't get me started on that one, man. <laughs> hey, come check out the Still Morning Game. Oh, it's fun. Hot Wheels girls working hard. Yeah, I always do use this, this Eiffel Tower analogy. It's like, you know, when you go to France, you get your picture taken next to the Eiffel Tower. Why? Because you're never near the Eiffel Tower. We had our first Tomb Raider model, her name was Rona Mitra, at the E3 show in 1997. And that was, to this day, in terms of fan interest, she's probably still the most beloved of all the models. Huge crowds around our booth. She's now gone on to be a, a movie star. It's fun, it's video games. But the event is not all fun and games. I came here because this is the most amazing show on earth. Although E3 has earned a reputation as a giant party for the game industry, it remains largely a business event. Let me first talk about the, uh, the business of the interactive entertainment industry as a whole. E3 Here, is extremely important for the you. business, from the press angle, uh, from you know, everybody kind of evaluating each other. Every game looks and plays best on Xbox. Film has the summer season, like you gotta go see the summer blockbusters, right? For the gaming industry, that's Christmas. More than 200 will be on store shelves this holiday season. You can see most of them at the show here this week. E3 taking place in May, it's the setup for the games that are going to be coming out for that holiday season. The buyers are there. You can't ignore the fact that the brick and mortar shops, Best Buy, Walmart and everything, they're still huge, they're huge players. You gotta get your game in those store shelves. 
our perspective, the E3 really is all about positioning your game for release later in the year. And I mean, and also for future years, really getting into the minds of the stores and sellers and everything else. The press part of it's important, but I mean, ultimately, it's, it's a retail business. And I think that's what a big part of E3 is. It's my pleasure to announce the world premiere of Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball. It's an opportunity to, to kind of get some attention, raise our hand and say, yes, we're here, we have a new, a new game coming out. And hopefully that will lead to uh, more in-depth opportunities to demonstrate the game, to do press and interviews, etc. So E3 is kind of like a coming out party for a, for a game. All right, good. That means you like it. Products these days tend to get built on 18-month cycles. So what you show at E3 on any given year will change year to year because you're in a different state year to year because of the offset of those cycles. So some years you're showing something very early, you're showing it behind closed doors, you're not on the floor. Only very select press retailers are being able to see early stages of things. I don't think many of you are aware of it. It's an fire. This is kind of like a gathering of the clans. There aren't that many events during the year when you get to see everybody and you get to see what everybody's working on. It. We'll show you a little bit of the early content of the game. For us now at Bioware, a lot of our own products are, are demoed at the various locations of our publishers and in our own booth as well. As I zoom in, you notice the, uh, the cloth effects there. When we show off our games at E3, I always feel discouraged. No matter how good our game looks, we've been looking at it for months and months and months on end. So even if our game looks 10 times better than everything else on the show floor, I don't see that. All I see is the flaws in our game. People come up and remind you, they're like, oh my god, the game looks amazing. You're like, you think so? People wind up digging the games, but E3 you know, is such a mixed bag of emotions from that angle. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, if you will please take your seats, our program is about to begin. This is your moment, this is your opening. It's Broadway, it's opening night. You're gonna read the reviews the next morning and you're either hot or you're a flop. Either way, it's a very, very important show. E3 is just this amazing ability to take like three days and go see everything. And suddenly feel like you've got like a handle on where the industry is going again and then get right back into your stuff. Every year, the convention hands out a Best Game Award, which often translates into successful sales. I think that all game companies come to E3 and they see it as a really critical event. You want to have a good showing. You want that buzz uh, because that flows out of the show. It can give a huge lift off. The first time you see people seeing your game and you can stand about 20 feet back and people don't know you're there and you can just watch them play your game and watch him have fun and watch him not want to put down the hand controller is a very special feeling. It's like a big toy box. You get to see all these games everywhere that you just get to play them all. So it's, it's a cool place to go to. There's so much to see, and you can see them in their interactive form. You know, you're not looking at a magazine and a screenshot, you know, something static. You can actually go there and, and play. That's very valuable. And since its inception in 1995, E3 has grown to reflect the constantly changing consumer environment. 1,400 new products are shown, and 60,000 retailers, developers, distributors, and media gather for three memorable days. The industry's evolved. We have cell phone games, we have PDAs, wireless games, we have online games. And as all those different technologies and platforms emerged, the show has evolved to reflect that diversity in the industry. Why don't we show the folks how this works? Sure. John, are you going to color commentate for us? Yeah, you can't beat this, man. Football in May. You're around <laughs> football. And we are live, ladies and gentlemen. What? And by now, the joke is you need a golf cart to kind of get around and get from meeting to meeting over the course of three days and do all that you need to do. The noise level is much greater than it was before. You know you've been in a place where entertainment is rocking when you come into E3. Sensory overload. <laughs> An exciting and enervating environment. Now you're talking. E3 means something different to everybody, and there's no denying that everybody wants a ticket in. E3 is, is kind of like one-stop shopping for what's going on in the industry. 
It's certainly gotten gigantic. Hi, Laura. What about your measurements? Ah, uh, well, I've got to leave some suspense. It's kind of a reflection of how much energy and what's happening in this industry. I love going to the show. It's exciting and it's terrifying at the same time. This show has kept its focus. It is about games first, last, and always. You'll have to kind of check out the game. It's coming out on the 15th of November on the PlayStation 2 and the PC. What I love about E3 is it's our show. The energy is wonderful. It's loud. And even after nine years, I still feel special about that. We have one place that's about our industry, our games, our creative art. It's with the volume turned up all the way, and the colors all saturated, and the TV as bright as you can get it, but it's our show. And our announcement is that starting next year, in 2003, E3 will become a three-week show. And obviously I'm joking, so don't show up three weeks early next year. Uh, unless you want to help set up boots.